Good morning, everybody, and, uh, and happy holidays uh, to all of you. Um, I am joined here. I'm Daryl Steinberg, for those of you who uh, may not know who I am. I'm the president of the California State Senate. I represent Sacramento in the State Senate. And I am the author of Proposition 63, the Mental Health Services Act, passed by the California voters in 2004. I'm joined by Dr. Cameron Carter, uh, MD, Professor of Psychiatry and Behavioral Science at UC Davis Medical Center, Eduardo Vega, the Executive Director of the Mental Health Association of San Francisco, Jessica Cruz, the Executive Director of the National Association for the Mentally Ill, otherwise known as NAMI, NAMI California, Taisha L. Caldwell, PhD, uh, the Community Mental Health Program Manager, uh, working with the University of California, Office of the President, and Anara Gard, the Senior Project Director for Education uh, Development from the Know the Signs of Suicide Prevention campaign. You'll be hearing from all of them, and then we invite you after uh, the press conference to visit uh, the effort uh, downtown Sacramento, which is one of the models of uh, mental health services that we want to talk about here today. So let me thank you again for joining us. Uh, I have two goals here today. One, I intend uh, to make a proposal for this state and this country in light of Vice President's newly established task force on gun violence. And number two, we want to do something that is, on the one hand, simple, but too complicated for, many, for, for a lot of people. Uh, and, and that is to tell the people of California, hopefully through you and your outlets, and anybody else watching this or watching this in live stream fashion, what you can do if you are suffering or know somebody who's suffering or living with mental illness, specifically around suicide reduction, how to identify the signs of mental illness, how to access services, especially for college students who um, often, which is often the first time where young people suffer a break or have their first episode of significant mental illness. Now, why are we here? Last week's horrific mass murder at Sandy Hook Elementary School sparked a national debate on the provision and access to mental health services. It should not take such a tragedy, such an outrageous tragedy, to spark a conversation about mental health. But the fact of the matter is that it sometimes does take the public's attention on the worst of worst circumstances to talk about and to act around how we improve systems that for far too long have been underfunded and ignored. One caveat right from the beginning, and this is very important. Mental illness and violence should not be equated. And there's a danger even in holding such a press conference like this in the wake of the Sandy Hook Elementary tragedy. The vast majority of people living with mental illness, serious mental illness, are not violent. People who are suffering don't usually pick up weapons and kill people. And it's really important that while Sandy Hook is the impetus, that we make that point very clear. But there's another reality. Mental illness is the unspoken issue of our time. The homeless are the most visible manifestation of untreated mental illness. But they are not the only ones who are suffering. When I campaigned for Prop 63 in 2004, our motto was, everybody knows somebody. Every family, every workplace, every school, 
There are people who are living with depression, bipolar disorder, and sometimes schizophrenia, anxiety, a whole host of mental illnesses, and we rarely talk about it. This issue is much closer to home than we care to admit. The statistics are clear. More than one in four U.S. adults has some form of mental illness or substance abuse problem. That includes the diagnoses like post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety, ADHD. Many cases are mild, but 14% of the United States population live with a moderate or severe mental illness. And so while we talk a lot about gun violence, and I intend to be part of leading that debate as well. We have far too many assault weapons that uh, are out on the street. Today we want to focus on mental health. There is no question that the system in California and throughout the country is woefully underfunded. But California has what I consider to be its best kept secret. Proposition 63, the Mental Health Services Act. Passed by voters in 2004, the, a millionaire's tax before its time, a 1% tax on million dollar earners. This act is generating a billion dollars or so a year for desperately needed mental health services in California. Now it is not perfect because while Prop 63 funding has risen, the funding for the core system, mostly run at the county level, has been cut because of the recession and budget cuts by hundreds of millions of dollars. But we are still doing great things for many people. 60,000 Californians have been served by Proposition 63's whatever it takes approach to mental health treatment. It includes housing, medication, employment assistance, therapy. These programs, known as full service partnerships, have resulted in the ending of the cycle of homelessness or jail time and misery for thousands of Californians already. But Prop 63 says and does something as significant. Every year, 20% of the money must be spent on prevention and early intervention. We've moved away, we're trying to move away, from the old and expensive crisis first model and trying to reach people before they hit rock bottom, changing their lives for the better, trying to keep people out of systems in the first place. We're expanding mental health services on college campuses. We're expanding suicide prevention hotlines. We are investing in supportive housing. We are focusing on educating people about stigma and discrimination and about how to identify the signs in a loved one or a coworker. We have the national model in California. Therefore, today I am writing to Vice President Joe Biden and his newly formed commission established yesterday by the President of the United States. The purpose of that commission is to look at gun violence and mental health in America. I will make two recommendations in this letter, which we will hand out to you before the press conference is over. Number one, I will recommend that the federal government build a national system of mental health care based on California's Mental Health Services Act. And two, being fully cognizant of the fiscal cliff, I hate that term by the way, um, but fully cognizant that the federal government itself has uh, its fiscal challenges, but also recognizing that investing in prevention and early intervention saves dollars and will save the federal government when it comes to Medicaid spending as we implement Obamacare. I propose that for every dollar that a state puts forward to fund prevention and early intervention, 
and whatever it takes services that the federal government put up an equal matching dollar. The numbers, the dollar commitment is large, but not that large. If you think about our billion dollars a year spent in California, if 20 states, smaller states, or even some of the larger states were to do something comparable, you could imagine a federal investment of 15 to 20 billion dollars to actually build a network of services that focus on prevention and early intervention and for those who are most seriously ill, supportive, permanent housing, and whatever it takes. Adopt a national model. Adopt Prop 63 as the national model and put up a dollar for every dollar that a state puts forward to build a mental health system that treats people with respect and with dignity. There's a second purpose to today's press event aside from this letter and my proposal. And that is we have put together a number of materials, I call it meat and potatoes, phone numbers of crisis lines in all 58 counties, phone numbers, websites, email addresses where people can call and get access to the services that are available. And if in crisis can get help immediately to, to avert their own tragedy and to get through not only these difficult times, but, but all difficult times. Um, I, wanna, I want you to hear about some of what is going on, and I guess my ask to the press is where it is possible to put in your newspapers or over your radio, or over the television, or on the internet, these phone numbers, email addresses, and websites so that people can, can readily know what they can do for themselves or somebody else to get help. As President Obama has said around the gun issue and everybody has said, there's no foolproof way to prevent horrible tragedies. But we must do everything we can to help people, to save lives. And by helping more people access help when they need it, in, in basic and common sense ways, we can and will do just that. The majority of people who have mental illness can uh, obtain significant benefit from treatments that have been developed over the last 20 to 50 years that can um, help to stabilize mental illness. We're still waiting for cures, but it can help to stabilize mental illness and very much improve outcomes and ensure that many people with mental illness are able to lead productive and satisfying lives. Most serious mental illnesses have their onset during adolescence and young adulthood. And there's a growing body of evidence to suggest that the best outcomes from treatment are when the treatment is made available at the very earliest stage in the emergence of symptoms. People who get care early do much, much better than people who go for months or years without getting treatment. I just want to um, acknowledge and support uh, Senator Steinberg's comments uh, with regard to mental health issues uh, in California and across the nation. And I think um, there's so much that can be learned uh, from what happened in Connecticut, uh, as sad and as vicious as that was, and that you know we really ought to take this opportunity to reflect on what's happening uh, within family environments uh, where things are kept silent and um, the necessary treatment from a mental health perspective is not being provided. And so if anything good can come from this tragedy, uh, certainly this is a great opportunity for us to uh, re-examine our view on mental health issues and how we address them uh, in California. Certainly, Senator Steinberg has been the leader 
in California on that issue. So uh, whatever I can do from uh, my perspective as a, uh, a neighboring senator, a Republican, uh, with Senator Steinberg uh, on the issue of mental health, uh, I want to try to uh, help, especially with that awareness, because I think so much, um, so many issues could be addressed simply through acknowledgement, getting past uh, the fact that, that um, people feel, I think, uh, shamed when it comes to a mental health issue and not wanting to address that in a public fashion. Um, we need to get beyond that, uh, get to the opportunities for prevention. And uh, Daryl is right, uh, and the doctor was right, in terms of the early intervention aspect. And uh, if we can get at these teenagers at an early age, get them the proper medication if that's necessary, get them the uh, proper counseling for, to live successful lives. Thank you. Across the world, mental health conditions affect millions on a daily basis. The occurrence of mental illness is effectively the same in all countries. The tragedy of mass violence is not. Mental health conditions are very common, affecting almost every family in America. Up to 25% of the population at any given point, as Senator Steinberg pointed out, almost half of all people will experience some disabling level of mental illness in their lives. Right now, today, the number of people living with a seriously disabling mental health condition is more than the population of Texas. Stigma associated with mental health conditions, including the misconception that people with mental illness may be violent, stops our society from properly funding and providing the positive, effective services that help people recover. And, and it stops our families and friends from utilizing those or even talking about what they're going through. Death by suicide is now the single leading cause of preventable death in our country. The highest cause of accidental death now overcoming motor vehicle accidents. It kills over 100 people every day, many thousands of Americans every year. 1-800-273-TALK. We're trying to co coordinate as many of the different suicide prevention hotlines as possible. That's a central number where one can get referred immediately, I assume, to the right person. 1-800-273-TALK. We know that millions of Americans are affected by mental illness every day, families and those who are actually suffering. It can become overwhelming for the family and that person. And that's why NAMI California and NAMI, the national organization, and our 67 local affiliates throughout California, 19,000 members, provide programs of support an outreach to reduce stigma and discrimination. When tragedy hits, no matter if it's national, statewide, local, or within your own personal family, reach out to somebody at NAMI. We have been there. We're parents. We're family members. We are individuals that are living with mental illness, and we can help you go through this together. We are completely grateful and appreciative of the California Mental Health Services Authority and Prop 63 for the funding that has been provided to the UC system. Already on all 10 campuses, our students have access to counseling services, whether that's individual therapy, couples counseling, group counseling, and lots of wellness programs to support a healthy, lifestyle. We're training our faculty and staff on how to recognize and respond to students in distress. This is key. Our faculty and staff are the first people often to recognize the early warning signs of mental illness. Um, and it, when they're equipped and know what to look for and what to do, um, the student is able to get services. We're also training our peers on campus, so we're increasing the number of students that are gonna be active bystanders and they're gonna be able to say something and do something when they notice warning signs or something that's wrong on campus or with another student. Additionally, we're enhancing our suicide prevention efforts by screening large numbers of our students for depression and the early warning signs of mental illness. As we're doing that, we also recognize that there is a huge stigma associated with getting help and so we're launching marketing campaigns on all of our campuses to reduce stigma and to allow students to really overcome that barrier of seeking services. 
I want to draw your attention to the logo over here of the Know the Signs statewide suicide prevention marketing campaign being funded through the Mental Health Services Act. The website, suicideispreventable.org, has been launched since November 1st, and Californians all across the state are coming to it. It's available in both English and in Spanish. This website educates Californians of how to have a meaningful conversation, a direct conversation with someone that they're concerned about and where to go to find help. The orange part of the site is Know the Signs. This offers information on what the warning signs for suicide are. You can look specifically for signs that are relevant to teens and also to older adults who have disproportionately high rates of suicide. On the green Find the Words page, we've laid out a fairly simple way to approach this difficult conversation about suicide with someone who may be at risk. And then finally, the blue Reach Out page offers both national and county resources. There's a page for each of the 58 counties that shows you the resources that are available in that county. We are a placing website, but we are playing uh, uh, buttons, if you will, on every Senate website that will be a portal to accessing mental health services in in members' particular districts. That will be another another point of access. Your state senator will uh, will have a website that allows constituents to get easy to access information about where where to get help. The message here is that mental illness does not have to mean a sentence of of homelessness, of jail, of, of broken families, of unemployment, and of misery. It does not have to be. And so often we focus on the stories of people who fall through the cracks. And we're not here telling you that all is perfect because while 63, as the national model, is generating a billion dollars a year, we've lost a lot of funding as well. And so there's a lot of gaps. But if we have the will, both statewide and nationally, to invest in what we know works, we will save money, we will save lives, and we will help innumerable people lead better lives. Of all of the things that I am privileged to work on in my position, and I've had the opportunity to work on over my years of public service, I can think of nothing that is more important than this.